But actually, we have some good news this morning. I want to jump right into uh, some news that uh, the Tucson Unified School District received has just received regarding its its Ames scores. And uh, the, the, the news for the district overall was mixed. But rather than harping on the things that didn't go so well, I want to harp this morning on something that did go well. One of the things that uh, stood out in TUSD's report from the state on how its kids are doing with the Ames tests is Palo Verde Magnet School. And it has gone through a turnaround there. A lot of people thought it would never happen, but the school has just received an A grade from the state, which, of course, begs the question, what is Palo Verde doing, and can other schools emulate that? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, because Palo Verde Principal Eric Brock has joined us this morning to talk about all these things. Good morning, Eric. How are you this morning? Doing well. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming on and taking time out of your busy day. Uh, and. Um, uh, sharing your experiences with us so uh, let me just ask that question so what'd you guys do how did you um how did you turn this school around well you know it's not a an easy answer to to give you a you know a sentence or two um there there are a great many things that that Palo Verde went through um and first of all you know i'd like to congratulate all of our students and our and our faculty absolutely on yes work over the last three years that they put in to to earn this reputation and uh you know I, i've challenged them um, in speaking to both the faculty and the students here, that for as difficult as it was for us to arrive at the A designation, it, you know, it'll be twice as hard for us to continue to to show all of Tucson and, and the world what the home of the Titans is all about in the future. Right. Um, I think some of the things that you know that we did um, here at Palo Verde started with my predecessor, and and it began um, with selecting the right staff, and you know, it began with handpicking the teachers that were here. And of course they had content knowledge and the degrees they needed to, to be in the classroom to, to teach our students. Um, but we also needed to make sure that we had teachers that were available for our students, that, that cared for our students, that built relationships with them. Um, ones that didn't care about you know, a, a normal nine to five job um, for teachers that would be available to tutor before school, to tutor after school to give up a weekend, to come in on, on spring break and, and help our students prepare for AIMS tests. Um, those are the type of, of teachers that we have here, and, and in my opinion, they make the best in TUSD. Um, in terms of what the school tried to do, you know, the, the first thing that we decided was to, to have a, a mission and vision that guided our purpose. Like all successful businesses, we had to have a, a common path that, that brought everybody on the same page. And then we needed to make sure that our students knew it too. And we developed a, our vision in friendly terms and it's, it's you know, kind of simple. We want them to graduate, to acquire necessary skills, knowledge, and critical thinking abilities so that they can attend a college or university to pursue a career path or attend a technical school. And with that in mind, that kind of set the frame for, for our journey and what we wanted to do. Paint the picture for me a little bit. Tell me, for those who might not be familiar, uh, what's the uh, student population at Palo Verde like? I mean, t- tell me your, your ethnic, your demographic, your socioeconomic breakdown at your school. Uh, we're 75% um, Title I students, so that means uh, that we have um, the majority of our population is free and reduced lunch. Um, in terms of the total population count, um, we were projected to have 960 students this year, and, you know, I'm very happy to report that we're at about 1150 right now. Wow. People are are noticing what we're doing and uh, and they want to take advantage of the type of teaching teachers that we have here and the type of students that we have here nice. um, in terms of ethnic breakdown we're about 51 percent Hispanic um, we uh, we have about 19 percent African-American um, a little less than that and um, for Caucasian and and you know no, none of that matters necessarily we have the students here at this school who have heart who, uh, who want to do things that are bigger and better and are taking advantage of, of all the opportunities that, that we have, and they're making the most of it. Well, that's, um, you know, the federal government sure, the federal courts sure look at that racial uh, mix, mix uh, the mix of students. We talked a lot about that yesterday, but it uh, sounds like you have, um, sounds like you're meeting your goals there, and, um, but the academic achievement is just astonishing. So let's, let's go back to, um, you're talking about recruiting the right teachers. Now, your school went through uh, what some might call a shakeup, starting in 2011, where a lot of people were uh, were replaced because of academic performance issues. You brought in new teachers, and it sounds to me like you're doing what uh, hiring ma- hiring managers are supposed to try to do. And I, know, and I know that I've got some experience with this in television, trying to hire people in news. You try to hire people with passion. You try to hire people that are not clock punchers. 
you try to hire people that have a sense of mission. Sounds like you've done that. So how did you do that? Because obviously you don't have any more money to play with than anybody else, I'm guessing, as a principal. Well, you know, I mean, I think the the school improvement grant did give us an opportunity to to use federal funding to lower class sizes. So we did we were able to hire a couple more teachers. Now that was a three year grant, so that that grant actually ran out last year. Right, but you're, um, I, I presume you're paying them the same though as other teachers in other schools, or is that is that incorrect? Uh, that is correct. Their base salary is the same as other schools. Right. So you don't have without having a salary incentive that would be greater than other schools, you have you have the task then of of recruiting teachers that have above average levels of passion. So tell me how you went about that. Well, um, a lot of that was done uh, by the former principal, Jan Acevedo. And and while I was an administrator under her, I was in charge of curriculum and instruction here. Um, What I saw her do is spend all day from the time the sun came up till it went down, down at district office and going through hundreds of interviews and and handpicking the staff that was here. There were a couple schools that uh, uh, Rincon was another that had an opportunity to, to kind of sit in and, and interview the same teachers, and we had an opportunity to, to handpick our staff that, so that they could um, we could have that passion that you talked about so that our students got a chance to see that. That's just absolutely outstanding. Now talk about a little bit about um, other things that go into this successful formula. I know one thing that you hear uh, a lot when you're reading about school quality or lack thereof Sometimes in schools that don't have a high level of quality, they have a marked uh, lack of parental involvement. So what have you done to get parents involved in their kids' education, and and where would you say you stand on those efforts? Well, uh, you know, the first thing is that we picked up the phone, um, that we invited them in. And it was, you know, it was a little bit of a slow process. I think most high schools, you know, look at... uh, by the time the student gets to high school, most parents are, are stepping back and, and instilling a lot of responsibility in the learner themselves. Um, but it started with creating those relationships um, with our teachers to call home. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things is, is that when you get a call as a parent from a school, you know, maybe your first reaction is, um, is, this, is this something negative? Yeah, and, that's, the way my, that's the way my parents were. We better not hear from your teacher because if you get in trouble at school, you're going to get it twice as bad at home. That was the message I used to receive as a kid. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think that a lot of parents have that in common, but I think the thing that might make our school a little bit different is that we're just as able to pick up the phone to report something that, that the student has done well. And, and that building that foundation, um, you know, I personally made some of those calls to call students that were excelling academically, that a teacher identified in a class that, you know, was turning the corner, that was really doing something well. And, you know, some of the parents on the phone were like, you're, you're calling me because so-and-so did a good job? Wow. And, and yeah, they, they did. And that's, you know, that's part of the way that we build that foundation here because the communication, the trust level, when you go through a turnaround process, I don't want to say it was broken, but it was definitely – you know, grade, and there wasn't a the continuity that they've had maybe from K through eight previously. So, you know, inviting them in for student recognition to make sure that they know when their students are doing things that are that are done well. Um, we we applied for a grant through the 21st century that allowed us to offer opportunities to not only our students after school but to our parents um, from things like strange things that ne- don't necessarily happen at school, but like a, a needle arts class, welding, genealogy, uh, first aid and CPR, beginning computers classes, all those things that we can invite parents in to not only learn a skill or a trade or, or whatever that may be, but to spend time within the walls of the school and, and notice how clean, how safe it is, what opportunities exist for their students. And hopefully through that word of mouth, they can tell their friends that, you know, Palo Verde is the place to be. They're, they've got this A label. Those kids are taking advantage of every opportunity possible, and they're doing it. Now, what did you? What was the starting point when you came on board, or more more correctly, I, sh- I should say, when your predecessor started recruiting uh, the teachers that you're talking about, and you then you continued that task. Where were you coming from? What was your letter grade at that time? Um, it was a well. We were identified by the state of Arizona as persistently under underachieving and uh and that's what started the turnaround process our letter grade at that time was what amounts to an extremely low c i think we were a point away from from being a d school um and then through you know the institution of a rigorous curriculum uh building relevance with our students and relationships with them uh you know obviously the outcome for us this last year was an a rating well that was going to be my next question as we talked about that you've got teachers with passion and you've got you're starting to get you know you get you're you're doing a much better job of getting the parents involved and getting them engaged. 
How do you motivate the students? What are you doing differently to make them buy into this idea that if they succeed and they bring the school's letter grade up, their lives will be better because of it? Well, I mean, from the student aspect, there's a lot of things. First of all, um, the opportunities that exist today at our school um, for for advanced learning experiences, ALE we call them, for honors classes and AP um, are, are so much more significant and available to everyone today than what they were when we first started. Um, we brought in a program that's called AVID, which is advanced via individual determination. And what we really look for the students that, that are like first generation college going culture, which the majority of our population is, um, and, and we try to build skills in them and belief in them that they can achieve at higher levels. Um, we bring in student teachers to work with them. We teach them ways to, um, to ask questions, to, um, to receive help, and to see that former students, college students are, you know, that are from Palo Verde are, are doing well in school and we role model for them. We give them access to college tours. We, we show them, we open the doors for them. And, and quite frankly, they run through it. Um, the idea of high expectations is something that, you know, I want all parents to know when they come to Palo Verde that we expect the best out of our students and we teach to those high expectations. You know, it's not something that, that our goal is, is to graduate a low number to get them, get them through. You know, our number here is 100%. Every student matters. We want to get them all those skills, knowledge, and thinking abilities so that they can go on and represent us. Um, we bring back students that are successful, and, and we make sure that they know, you know, through data talks with those students, we actually meet with them. We pull them out of class. Did you know this is where you are credit-wise? This is where you are on our, your standardized test. We talk to them about goal setting, and we make sure that it, at the forefront of their minds is what are we doing next after you leave Palo Verde? Where are you going? What are you doing? And one of the projects that I worked on when I was just the assistant principal here, um, if you come into our hallways, you'll see pictures of our of our students in their cap and gowns with letters of acceptance to the different colleges or universities that they've gone to, some with five or six of them. Wow. And then we actually put the, the college logo or the university logo in their background so that they can, so everyone can see this is where we're going, this is what we're doing. And you know what? Um, I went to this school, my brothers went here. It's almost a sense of competition for some of our students who have siblings that go here that, oh, I'm going to beat that. You know, they're going to this school, you know, I want to go to an Ivy League school or I want to, I want to have twice as, matter, twice as many letters of acceptance. And it's a matter of pride for those students. And if you look at their faces, the smiles that they have, it tells a story that, that wasn't possible, you know, three or four years ago here. It is an amazing story. Now, the uh, TUS, Sunnyside, like TUSD, overall has been a district that struggles. And by coincidence, it's also a district that has had a lot of political turmoil on its board. Uh, they, that district issued a statement saying that the fact that they're having to teach common core standards now, which uh, don't necessarily teach all the same things as the as are needed on the Ames test, has something to do with their lack of performance. So tell me a little bit about how common core affects your school and whether you see any problems going forward with what uh, with what happens with common core and then but within what as compared to what the Ames test is looking for. Well, the state hasn't necessarily adopted, uh, you know, what the new assessment model will be from, um, you know, moving forward from Ames. You know, there was some talk with Park. The state didn't agree to that. Maybe smarter balance. And there isn't an exact direction for us moving forward. In terms of Common Core, what we tried to do is make sure our teachers are aware of what's going on and to develop a guaranteed and viable curriculum. And that's also a district initiative. That's not just here at Palo Verde. Right, right. Through our turnaround, yeah. though, we might have gotten a, you know, a step or two head start on what the district is so that the, the teachers can make sure that it's clearly articulated what our kids, what they want our kids to know and be able to do. And so, you know, in terms of, of what the new expectations are, we certainly are on board with, with trying to make sure that there's a strong aspect of, of critical reading, of close reading, um, you know, that, that there is reading and writing across the curriculum, and so to speak, to remove some of the silos that might exist. You know, you might be, in, in the past, there might have been an attitude that I was a math teacher and, and that that's what I got to work on, and that I was an English teacher, and, and that's what I have to work on in science. And really what we're talking about now is making sure that all those skills are present in our instructions and, and so that even if you are a science teacher, that there are still aspects of, of reading and writing that, 
that are necessary and that in math, instead of just solving for you know, A, B, or C here, that we're looking at being able to explain those things. And so the new standards you know, are something that, that are gonna constantly develop through, you know, through teaching and learning over the years. And it's our job to make sure that our students are the most prepared that we can make them. Now tell me a little bit, if you don't mind me asking a personal question. I hear the passion in your voice, and I, and I, re- I read a little bit about you in the Arizona Daily Star this morning. You sound like it's kind of a, it sounds like kind of a welcome back, Cotter, where you've come back to your school and are now helping to lead it forward. Uh, what made you want to do that? What drives you? What made you decide that education is what you want to do, and not only just education, but education in this particular community, at this particular school? Tell me how you, how you got there and how this relates to your hopes and dreams. Well, um, you know, I think every teacher gets into it so that they can help see that light bulb that you can create. Um, For me, it started as early as 12 years old when I coached my first Ott YMCA basketball team. And and while it was sports-related there, it's still the same as when you finally get that light bulb to go on for a student in the class that maybe was struggling. And when you see them achieve and what they can do and the smile you can bring and enjoy the successes, you know, that speaks to some of the – you know, the motivation for not just me, but I'm sure for, for all teachers. Um, specifically, the reason why I wanted to come back to Palo Verde is, you know, I think that it's, you have this idea in your head of what your school was when you left, and through the years you had heard some of the things that, that had changed and maybe weren't to the standard that, that you wanted them to be, and, and certainly I felt like I could help Palo Verde achieve um, what I always thought it was and then to, to constantly improve that. And so for for me coming back here, I've been involved in several different aspects of this school, but um, you know, I take this this one to heart the most because while I'm while I'm on board here, I want to see the students get every opportunity they can to move on and represent our school and to tell our story and and to be the best that they can be. Which sort of brings us to the point of the interview. Tell me if there's a single thing you could say to other schools within the T, within TUSD or any district, any public school district. Uh, how can you export your success? What would you tell them if you had to give an elevator speech and say, you know, I'm, I'm the principal of this school and, and I and, and the faculty and our students succeeded because of X and you can do it too. What would you tell them? What would you tell them to do? Wow. Uh, short and concise. Um, you know, from, from the staff perspective, you know, you're picking the right teachers. Um, you're giving them that, that mission and vision. Um, You're arming them with the skills that they need, the best practices, the research base, and and you're giving them time, opportunity to to use those things. Um, From the student end, you know, opening doors, having high expectations, talking to them. You know, they are adults. They want to do better. They want to be, um, they want to be in college and to represent our community the best way that they can, and and it's our job to make sure that we give them that chance to open those doors for them. Um, From a school, you know, I want parents to know that when they come to Palo Verde, yeah, those high expectations are in place. We have a safe and secure environment. Um, and that for us, you know, the major things would be rigor, relevance, and relationships. And that's what's helped drive us and, and have success. But in the end, you know, there's been other schools that I've worked at where maybe the teachers didn't believe our teachers do, and so do our students. And that's what sets us apart. Belief in what you're doing. Final question. Hollywood tends to make movies about this kind of thing. I've seen them do it. Uh, who do you want to play you in your movie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a, that's definitely a funny question. I think that, <laughs> you know, I want the uh, the leading stars for our students so that everybody could uh, want to be one of those movie stars so that they can all have their stories tell, told. But for me, I'm just in the background trying to make sure that that door is open. I'll be the guy that opens the door when the camera runs through. I don't need any special uh, treatment from any of the Hollywood stars. You know, let's put that on our students because that's what they deserve for achieving this letter grade. You know, that's exactly what I would expect a, a principal like you to say. That's a, that's a great answer. I want to thank you for spending some time with us this morning. And on behalf of the entire staff here at Power Talk 1210, I want to congratulate you and your faculty and your, your whole team and your students for, for showing that it can be done. It can be done, and you've done it. So a heartfelt congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day. You too.